faced with such an immense catastrophe and, a, and such a complicated catastrophe also, perhaps it's best to follow the steps of the distinguished speakers who just preceded me and um, begin with anecdotes. I was sitting with my French medical team with Commander Ahmad Shah Massoud in Kabul in 1994 in the basement late at night while the rockets were raining down on the city delivering death and the besiegers uh, already the Taliban just taking over from Golbuddin Ekmatyar were trying to strangle the city. There was no medicine in the city. There was almost no food in the city. And with my French medical team, we managed after three months between Peshawar and Kabul, you can imagine the ordeal, the wow. difficulties, the obstacles we had to overcome in order to deliver the only medical supplies in Kabul at that time, while my own father was dying in Paris. So it was a very emotionally grueling time. But as we sat around this low table with Commander Masood, and we only had a petrol lantern to light the scene, Commander Masood unrolled a map and began explaining to me and my French team how he was definitely going to win against the besiegers because they were here, but he was going to move against them there and then outflank them this way. And you see, ultimately will win. And I don't know what came over me, but I just looked at Ahmad Shah Massoud and I said, you know, Commander, whether you win or you don't win isn't why we're here. We're here because we like you. And I think for once, Commander Ahmad Shah Massoud was silent. Uh, that was a very real, profound human commitment based on true respect, profound admiration. And this endures again in the circumstances of today, just as in those tragic days and nights that we shared together under the rockets, under the bombs, in 1994. But I add a second image, which is that on another one of those nights down in a basement, uh, we cranked up a generator and I projected onto a blank wall reproductions of the glorious paintings of the 15th century kingdom of Herat which I have been researching and investigating all over the world. I contributed to the reorganization of the Islamic art galleries of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And my reason for showing these images was because most of this art had disappeared from Afghan soil. And I wanted Afghans to be able to reconnect with a vital, profound and beautiful aspect of their own cultural heritage, again, with the idea that has been evoked by preceding speakers, that culture and defense of a people's culture is part of their human rights. One of the most dangerous mental traps, moral, ethical traps, into which humanitarians fall is somehow really unconsciously often, assuming that the people we help are after all a little inferior to us. We out of our own goodness extend a hand of assistance, but we have nothing to receive in exchange and unconsciously we demean. So that my struggle to restore to the Afghan people this whole portion of their medieval Islamic heritage extended when I was able to teach at the American University of Afghanistan, now under Taliban control. For the last four years, I was able to put up great panels of these paintings in the university in Kabul, and also where these paintings were first created in Herat, 
castle. It was marvelous to see even workers with wheelbarrows when we were installing saying, is this us? Is this what we created? And the message was, yes, indeed, not for people to return to the 15th century, but to feel if we have been able to give this beauty to the world with such philosophy and allegorical profundity, if we were capable of such achievements, then we are certainly capable of doing it now. And this leads me now to the second part of this little talk. Of course, Ahmad Shah Massoud was tremendously impressed. And we had many conversations on poetry and philosophy where I was able to sound the sheer profundity of his philosophical thought. And I want to bear witness to this aspect. Uh, during the fighting, uh, in Kabul between rival factions in 1994, I was on the site of Kabul Museum in Ruth, just when Masood's people were taking over the precincts, and I was able to call him immediately, the kind of telephone we had then, to say, the museum is now under your responsibility. If anything further happens to it, you will be blamed. And he immediately put a burden of war in full recognition of the importance of the cultural past of the country. So what this leads me to concerns now my own country's perceptions of Afghanistan, and I hope Carlotta and other Americans here will not feel too hurt, even though I do intend to hurt. Unlike what I have often seen of so many British friends, French friends, Swedish friends, Italian there seems to have been a speech in my country, in the United States, generally, of art for the Afghan people, not just as a strategic interest, and strategic interests seem to come and go, or at best objects to be depicted in one newspaper article after another as miserable backward or bywords of political corruption and dysfunction. And the French have a very good word for it, miserabilisme miserabiliste, always present a miserablest aspect of Afghanistan. And this continues. And I've often wondered why the Americans seem to have such a fundamentally negative view of the country. It is negative in the sense that at certain strategic times, like in the 1980s, and again in the first two decades of this grim century, Afghanistan constitutes a space to be denied to others who are feared, whether the Soviets or Al Qaeda, but it is not a place in which positively to invest oneself. I mention with some anger that our wonderful displays of medieval Afghan art were visited by all our European colleagues and ambassadors and aid workers, by French, Italian, German journalists, Americans, diplomats or journalistic, never. Culture, Afghans, yes, we'll concentrate on the misery, but on nothing else. And look at the result, America decides that the country no longer even have, has a negative interest, we drop it. The place is miserable, then we'll extend a helping hand. But regard for Afghan culture or for high Afghan figures like Commander Massoud, very, very little. There is some, but pathetically, pathetically little. And I'll end again with a terrible image, 
which everybody who has seen Kabul in the last 20 years probably has seared into their eyeballs. Running through Kabul is a river, just as every other capital city in the world generally has a river, of course. And that river between 2001 and 2021 was left as a cesspool, as a bath for typhus, as a rivulet of ordure and filth and raw sewage. It never seemed to occur to the American presence in Afghanistan that if the central river in the capital of the country is not cleansed, is not rendered hygienic and fit for a human community, then how could America pretend to be defending democracy, human rights? Uh, I certainly approve of federalism, but that's another question. This river was left to rot and worse. The American embassy was revealed by the American military paper, Stars and Stripes, as pouring its own wastewaters, the American embassy's wastewaters into Kabul River. That was corrected to insist from the American embassy people. Uh, no, we actually subcontracted the treatment of our wastewaters to an Afghan group, micro rayon wastewater treatment, uh, and we gave them the money to treat our wastewater. And they, of course, pocketed the money, corruption, and poured American wastewater into the central river of Afghanistan's capital. That symbol alone says it all, the mismanagement and the fundamental, I use the word, realizing the implication, the fundamental contempt, a contempt so deep, so profound that it is unaware of itself. As we see editorials bandied back and forth in the American press about the drawbacks or the advantages of our 20 year presence, but so little said about the cultural worth of a people in whose fate we became so heavily involved. So this is my cry of pain. As the head professor of the American University of Afghanistan, after I transitioned from Princeton University to Kabul in 2017, it was my task to oversee a full cultural rehabilitation of Afghanistan's past, literary heris, uh, heritage, uh, artistic heritage, historical investigations, all of this with our Afghan students. We're making this a true nation building cultural center. And Ahmad Masood John was coming to see us. We often had conversations with Ahmad Masood as well. But this is the last I put in. When the moment for evacuation came, of our 4,000 students, Afghan, boys and girls, and of our 39 Afghan faculty, I leave you all to guess how many were considered priorities for by the American embassy in Kabul. And I'll just pause for one second. Zero, not one. 600 students with their papers in order who managed to bus to the airport where they had received authorization from the American embassy to be evacuated. And when they arrived, they were told by our American representatives that their names had been crossed out an hour before, not priorities, go home. This cannot more eloquently depict or stress or highlight an attitude of 
absolute cultural contempt. Even the American University of Afghanistan created with American taxpayer money was not considered important because that's just Afghan culture and who cares? So it's a sorry message. And this is why I am sharing it with you because the pain of this never leaves me. Every day I receive one phone call after another, help, help, help. And it's left to the international professors that we are here. Most of us are in Europe now to do what we can to help evacuate those people who trusted us, to whom we advertised the greatness of our system and our civilization, and that we have left simply to die. Thank you very much.